Okay, let's talk about parallelograms. And obviously this is a, a part of geometry. Most of you out there probably know what a parallelogram uh, looks like. This is an example of one. But uh, how much do you know about parallelograms? That's the topic of this video. We we're going to go into some uh, uh, detail that's very important uh, that you understand this stuff, especially if you're uh, taking like high school level geometry. But even if you're not in a geometry course, you can follow along and learn quite a bit of uh, small little minor details that make up uh, a parallelogram, but all these little minor details collectively all together, you know, is very important math knowledge to have. So I'm going to get into all these little uh, things about uh, what makes parallelograms parallelograms in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math course. Now, if you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or Alex exam, CLEP exam, a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and uh, pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a fantastic homeschool curriculum and homeschool program you might be interested in. And if you don't have any math notes, you can use mine. I'm going to leave uh, links to all my math notes in the description of this video. But uh, I've been teaching math for decades, and I'll tell you the secret to doing well in mathematics is taking great math notes. So start taking better math notes. You'll thank me later. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's talk about parallelograms now. Uh, I've got a little pop quiz here for you. There's special types of parallelograms. Can you name a couple? Okay. Uh, namely, there's like three. Sometimes we can classify them as four. But what are, the, what are some special type of parallelograms? Some of you might be... Uh, remembering this back in your studies but if you know the answer go ahead and leave um or if you know some of these uh put those put that into the comment section i'm interested in uh seeing what you know and by the way uh tell me what you think you know about a parallelogram okay just maybe it's basic definition or whatever thing uh whatever else you might think you know, uh, know about a parallelogram i'm sure a lot of you know a pretty good amount but let's go ahead and get into uh the specifics right now Okay, so here is a pretty crazy figure. I'm going to break this down here uh, in a second. So you're looking at this and you're like, oh boy, there's a lot of notation, a lot of scribble scratch going on here. Well, everything uh, on this little diagram or figure um, has a specific meaning, but let's uh, start from the uh, basics. Okay, so we're talking about a parallelogram. Of course, this is what one uh, looks like, but a parallelogram is a special, it's a special type of quadrilateral okay so when we study quadrilaterals in uh, geometry uh, one particular type a special type of quad of a quadrilateral is a parallelogram there's other types of, of uh, quadrilaterals like trapezoids etc but uh, parallelograms are specific types of quadrilater quadrilaterals now uh, what a quadrilateral is it's a let me go just write this down here it's a four sided uh, polygon. We'll leave it like that. I can kind of get into convex uh, type of uh, polygons and concave, but uh, we'll just leave it like, hey, it's a four-sided polygon, and a polygon is just a figure that's uh, made up with like line segments. So like uh, the first one most people know is the triangle. That's a three-sided polygon, and then anything that has four sides to it, something like that, is a quadrilateral and a parallelogram is a special type of quadrilateral. So that is uh, one of the most basic things you need to know about a parallelogram. But now let's get into the specific properties of a parallelogram. And matter of fact, let's just kind of de uh, define it. So one, it's a quadrilateral, okay? However, it's a quadrilateral where opposite sides, okay? Opposite sides are uh, parallel to one another, okay? Hence the, um, um, part of this, you know, definition of parallelogram as being parallel, okay? So in geometry, this little notation right here, these arrows like this, anytime you see this, if you're not familiar with this, sometimes they look like that. This indicates that these two lines here, or this line segment and this line segment are parallel to one another. Now, I could uh, state this in a different way. If I said, uh, let's give uh, this some points, A, B, C, D, 
I can call this, and this is the notation for it, generally speaking, parallelogram A, B, uh, C, D. It's another way to express this. So, uh, first of all, what you want to know about a parallelogram is that the opposite sides are parallel. So, in this case, uh, let's say AB right here is going to be parallel to CD. So, I could write that this way AB, line segment AB, is parallel to uh, CD, line segment CD. You could do it that way. And then, of course, BC, all right, BC is parallel to AD. Right, there you go. So there's BC and there's AD. But I don't have to use this notation. I could just put these little arrows on this line. So uh, I put those on there because a lot of times students don't know what this, uh, what these little arrows mean. It's very important that you understand that though. Okay, so that's basically a parallelogram, but along with, um, it's a basic definition of a parallel. It's a polygon, I'm sorry, it's a uh, quadrilateral four sided polygon where opposite sides are parallel. Now, uh, along with that, okay, is the opposite sides are congruent, okay? So that's what this little, those little two things right here means that this side and this side are congruent to another. Matter of fact, let me go back to the parallel notation. See this arrow? I have two arrows here, and I only have one little uh, arrow here. So this one and this one, it's one-to-one. -one. I'm indicating this line and this line segment are parallel. So to not confuse, I just can't put an arrow here and an arrow here because then I'm saying all four of these are parallel. They're clearly not. So I have to use like two. Okay, so these two apply to these two, one and one. Same thing with the congruent uh, notation. So anytime you have little uh, uh, marks like this, little hash marks going through these lines, you're saying specifically this line segment and this line segment are congruent. Basically, it's, they have the same measure, same length. Okay, so... And a parallelogram, not only are opposite sides uh, parallel, opposite sides are congruent. So this length and this length is the same. And then right here, you can see I have a little uh, um, hash right there. And this one, boom, boom, little notch. So these lengths are the same. So opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of this up here because this is getting kind of busy. But these are properties of parallelograms, all right? Things that you should know. All right, now let's get into some more stuff. So here, okay, opposite, I'm indicating, just look at these, you get this yellow uh, mark. I have, you can let me see if I can draw a little bit better. It's this notation, you'll see like a little arc that indicates an angle, and then I have like a congruent mark, but what I'm saying is this angle and this angle are congruent. So opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, same measure, and you can see that going on here distinctively with these two little marks right there. Okay, so opposite sides are congruent. So again, we're just covering a lot of different properties about parallelograms, and if you, um, you know, had some of these in the comment section, that's excellent, okay? All right, now let's finish up with these uh, blue lines, and these blue lines indicate uh, the diagonals, okay? These are the diagonals of a parallelogram and uh, diagonals intersect one another. They bisect one another. So this diagonal crossing through, it goes from this vertex to this vertex and this vertex to this vertex. These are what we call diagonals and they chop each other in half. Okay, so this is congruent and this is congruent as indicated by the figure. So that's a pretty good summary of uh, what a parallelogram is and the specific properties of a parallelogram. And if you knew most of this stuff, I must go ahead and give you a happy face and a check mark. Very, very good. Now, we're going to we're gonna get into special types of uh, parallelograms and or quadrilaterals. So uh, there's basically four types. And uh, we're going to first start off right here with just the parallelogram. Right? These are special types of quadrilaterals. Now, our first here... Um, you know, and we're going to start with a, just a general parallelogram, this one right here. So we just described um, everything that we talked about with just a parallelogram. So if you see it, something with this kind of shape with it, we would describe this as a parallelogram and has all the properties that I just indicated. But there's other types of uh, parallelograms uh, and or special types of quadrilaterals that we don't call parallelograms. They go by different names. And you can see down here that we have a couple and there's actually three, okay? So this one goes by a certain name. This one goes by a certain name, and then we have one more that kind of looks like a diamond, okay? It looks like maybe something like this, all right? 
So this is the one I'm interested in knowing, um, uh, interested to seeing if you know what this one is. Okay, if you do, put that in the comment section. And I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit and give you a hint. It starts with an R. It starts with an R. Okay, so let's get into these uh, special types of parallelograms. So the first one is this square. Let me just kind of cover this up here. We'll get to this last one here in a second. So this is a, a square is in fact a parallelogram, but we don't call it a parallelogram. We call it a square, but it still has the properties of a parallelogram. These opposite sides are parallel and they're congruent. Now what uh, makes a square a square is that the angles, okay, are right angles. In other words, they're in all 90 degrees and all the sides are congruent. Okay, so all the sides are congruent and all the angles are uh, right angles. That, by definition, is a square. But again, it has all the properties of a parallelogram. So it is part of the parallelogram family. Now, the next one is a rectangle. Okay, a rectangle is, in fact, a parallelogram. Now, if you imagine right here, if I kind of took this rectangle, let's say they had like little hinges here, and I can kind of just push this thing this way, kind of push it over, I can just make this into like a typical kind of looking parallelogram by going like this, right? So I wouldn't change the, the lengths of the side. I would just kind of like tilt it over, if you will, if you can kind of use your imagination. But um, uh, we kind of think of that like here, this typical uh, looking parallelogram, if I could kind of straighten it up, it would, it would kind of look like that, right? I would straighten it up and I would straighten it up into the form of a rectangle. Okay, so a rectangle, uh, very similar to a square, in the sense that all four uh, angles are 90 degrees, right angles, uh, but opposite sides are congruent. Then all four sides are not congruent with one another, just the opposite sides. So again, by definition, this is a parallelogram, but when we have uh, these special parallelograms, we refer to them as rectangles and square. And our last one, you probably uh, saw this when I had this down here. It's called a rhombus, a rhombus. So if you knew this, that was excellent. So a rhombus is basically a parallelogram uh, with just all four sides being congruent. Okay, that's the uh, uh, basically the main kind of aspect of it. So it's like taking a square and kind of like just smashing it down towards one another. So we kind of like stretch it out this way, if you will, kind of think of it, uh, think of it in those uh, respects. But this is a rhombus. Okay, all four sides are congruent. But again, it, it is a parallelogram. Okay, it is a special type of parallelogram and a special type of quadrilateral. Okay, so if you knew all of this stuff, well, it's pretty impressive. I'm going to go ahead and give you a happy face with a good old 1983 Mohawk and A+. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a couple stars just to feel extra special for watching this video today. Nice job. Okay, now if you didn't know everything, don't feel too bad, okay, because, um, you know, even if you knew some of this stuff, that means that you're on the right track. But now you know a lot about parallelograms, all right? Parallelograms, you know, very, very important Um and I can go into uh, the area of a parallelogram, okay, which is going to be what? Area equals uh, base times height, okay? So it's base times height. That is the area of a parallelogram. I didn't want to uh, leave that out there. So again, you know, when you're studying geometry, there's so much to know about all these special figures, all right? And that's why you have to take notes, okay? There's just no way you can remember all this stuff without taking notes. But Anyways, if this video helped you out in some small way, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out in a big way. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced math. My goal is to always try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Anyone can learn this stuff. Of course, you got to do your part, take notes, work hard at this. But uh, beyond that, anyone can learn uh, mathematics, all right, and excel at it, right? But, you, you know, it's definitely, you know, a skill and it does require uh, work and time, all right? So if you like my uh, teaching style, I have a ton of, uh, of videos that I've made that can help you out. Again, algebra, geometry, even more advanced stuff, even like calculus and whatnot. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.